good Saturday morning. Got a couple packages going out. It's kind of chilly today. It's supposed to get down, back down into the single digits for a few nights. So I got a big box going out to Saskatchewan, Canada, to Don Evans, and a calendar going back to Diego Alanis in Nevada. So Diego, it's on its way. Go down to the post office and pick it up this time. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Hi kids, it's Mr. Upholstery here, uh, working on a car, doing a little carpet installation. Let me show you what I've been getting done. So I've been uh, working on this, uh, well not all day, I've been mostly on the phone all day. So I got the rear panel in, I finished trimming along there, put the sill plate, sill plate on, kick panel, got trimmed around the heater AC, drain holes, up over the tunnel around that texas shaped piece of insulation so i think next thing i'm gonna go start working on is the headliner see how bad i can screw that up <laughs> anyway uh i got a big old box of parts from cossack industries <laughs> classic industries anyway about 800 and some odd bucks worth of stuff in there. Uh, there's a radio, so I can get that in the dash and don't have to mess with it again, get it all wired up. Got a radio, you can't, you can't drive a Dodge Challenger without some awesome 70 music, 70s music in there blaring. You ain't gonna hear none of that hip hop crap in here. <laughs> Need to get in there and cut out where the speakers go. I do have some speakers that were in the car not sure if I'm going to use those. Guess I can. I don't know if they even work or if they're any good, but I need to put those in there. Cut make cut out where the package tray insulation goes for those. Oh, okay. Coming in. Oh, hi. Holy moly. Uh, okay, I am trying to draw the speaker cutouts for, for this felt that goes up here. There, perfect. Perfect Ola. Oh, you want to watch? Hey, do you like to watch? I'll let you watch if you want to watch. Do you want to watch? Oh boy, do you wanna? I'll let you watch. Uh, okay. Can you see? Probably pretty too close, huh? Pretty too close. <laughs> yeah, that's funny there. I don't care who you are. Okay, Mr. Camera. Oh, come on. Right there. So I just take a Sharpie and go around here like this. Perfect. Now I just gotta get out of here. I'm gonna have to call Matt to come help me out of here. <laughs> All right. Get out of here. So, gotta get out of here. Oh. Okay. Okay, Matt. Need a hand. This is like falling in the toilet. You have to move chair over. Give me a pull. Okay, pull. Jeez, thank you. <laughs> Last time for that, I hope.
Ooh. Okay, if you want your rear trunk board to actually fit correctly, you buy one of these no good REM repop whatever pieces of junk. Classic Industries year one, I don't care who. <laughs> they're crap. You could throw a cat between the wheel well and the side of it. They just, they're horrible. They don't fit. They don't fit over the tunnel. I've never seen a factory one in one piece, so I have no idea how well the OEMs fat fit, but they had to have fit a hell of a lot better than these. So what you do is you go buy you a big old chunk of this board. I think I paid $21 for this it's like 65 inches wide by four feet and so basically I've measured and to cover the whole back there I need 59 and a quarter inches uh, now will come the fun part because I'm going to have to <sighs> I'm gonna have to put this I have to make this measurement and put it away enough like that and then I'm gonna have to draw this curve which is somewhat close um, and draw that and cut it out and I'll just have to keep fitting it and fitting it and fit it for that tunnel piece but if you want it to fit right this is what you got to do now the other thing too is you're gonna get this piece of felt material that goes on this and I've already put this one in and this one is terrible too you can it's got like way 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 too much you can see it doesn't even match the felt anyway it's cut wrong it's horrible so what I did is I went and bought a roll of about the same crap that was 23 bucks and that's a 10 foot roll five foot wide so i'll have leftover if i want to use it for something else anyway the problem with these is they don't come out here far enough uh to cover the holes so like you got a hole up in that corner and then you got this and where the electrical goes through so if you've got holes all over the sound is going to come through and one of the things you'll notice about a hot rod car is even if you run the mufflers and the tailpipes clear out the back valance, you get a huge rumble chamber in that trunk. So, you know, you've got to seal this all up good. So I've put uh, this sound deadener across where my speakers go and I've covered the holes in the back part here got those covered up because those go right back into the trunk also so my plan is, is to be able to cut that board so it goes clear over both sides I'll have to cut a hole or a slot in the board to go over the wiring deal I wish they made a plug for that but I don't think they do so I'll just have to do the best I can there and then the felt will go over that. Okay, I've had this son of a gun out of the car 10 times. But I finally got this side cut tight. Goes clear over, goes over the wiring. I got small slots for the seat mount backs. Uh, go all the way over to that side, gonna color, cover that hole. I got just a little bit I got to trim from there up around the fender well to there to get it in all the way. Um, this fits really good. Um, I did excellent on this side. Not so much on this side, I don't know what happened. But at least it's got it covered. So now what I got to do is up under here are the brackets for the back bottom of the seat mount. And... I've got to cut around those and the best way to do this is to if you've got one of those no good REM repop poopy things that doesn't fit you just use that as sort of a pattern and that's how I did all this okay this is the aftermarket one don't fit too good does it huge gap there 
Look at the size of the holes there. Look how far away from covering that hole and matching the wheel well. So I don't know how they build these, but I know with all the technology we have now, they have machines. You could come in here and you could scan the whole inside of the car, this whole backside, and you could cut one of these out to fit like a glove. Okay, this is the Jeff Anderson seat back board. Fits a little better than the REM piece of crap. So I've cut these out and then I slid it up here, pushed it in, and you take these and kind of bend them like that. Okay, so this is the felt piece I've cut out. I still got to cut out where the lower back seat mounts go but this fits so much nicer than the one you're going to get from rem um now this is just a, like a felt and it's just way more pliable than the hard stuff they send you okay that's what it'd look like if you put rem board back there um if you didn't want to cut out a brand new hardboard panel like i did he could probably use those cheap uh, backboards you get from aftermarket and then just use the heavy felt on front and cut it to fit tight. And that would probably help you seal off. I've been out in the car. I haven't got a lot done because I'm busy doing other things. But I've got my carpet in. I'm happy with it. And I got my uh, rear divider board built. I built this one myself. Makes a huge difference in the amount of sound that comes through the trunk. Anyway, so I've started on my headliner and I'm getting that in. I could find no one to come and do my carpet or my headliner. So I had to dive into this myself. And it's taken a lot of time because I don't know anything about interior stuff. I've never done it. Uh, so yesterday, let's see, today's Saturday, March 5th. So yesterday I spent most of the day between helping the boys and doing some other things trying to figure out how to pull this down and get the wrinkles out of it and attach it and then how to get... Um, the bows in up here and get them in the right holes and uh, been watching some videos as frustrating as it is you just have to keep trying and keep trying and I was in here the other day till my hands hurt and my neck hurt from trying to pull this that's what I'm gonna start doing is just going to town on this Ugh. I gotta get that car done. I gotta get that car done. Oh, morning. Oh, I tell you, oh, my back hurts. I've been out in this car working all week long. Oh, I sleep out here, I eat out here, poop in a bucket. <laughs> and if you believe that stuff, I got a challenger to sell you. It's completely done and restored. 500,000. I know what I got. <laughs> but this headliner has been just kicking my butt. And uh, I've been watching some videos. And I've never really found one that addresses an e-body. But I've watched a lot of other videos. And I've learned a lot. And I'm turning the tables on it now. I've started started to figure out how to do this now i've got the front all stretched in there i've got clips on the sides i got a few wrinkles i got to pull out my biggest issue is back here at the cell panels trying to make that all fit and get rid of the wrinkles now this headliner is made by legendary auto interiors they do a fantastic job uh their product's good and i like the way it goes in that's what I'm going to work on today is over here. Um, 
I got to get this cell panel attached and try to get these wrinkles out. So that's where we're going to go. I need to get a bunch of this trimmed off. So the carpet I pulled out of the Challenger and I got a guy that came out. I finally had an epiphany and I thought of a guy that could do this and he came out right away and uh, he's gone back to get some windlass to hold this up and some better glue than what I got and we're going to get this knocked out today. Ta-da! What do you think, kids? Woohoo! It's done. Man, oh man, oh man, am I glad to see the end of this. Looks beautiful. So I got a confession to make. I didn't do it. <laughs> so I remember there's a guy in Blackfoot. I know him well. Clement Metz. He has a business called Upholstery Services. Owns a cafe there in town called Martha's Cafe, too. Anyway, I went in this morning, talked to him about asking him if he'd come out and give me a hand. And uh, three hours later, he had all the wrinkles worked out and all of it put together. So he brought these pieces of windlass to put on here. And on a Dodge, you're supposed to glue this here. And gluing it sucks. And... I'm just going to leave these pieces on there because the trim that goes on here will go right up over those and fit over them. So anyway, turned out really nice. I'm super happy. So now I just got to get cleaning up all the residue and crap in here. Alrighty, so the uh, carpet's out and I vacuumed the crap out of it, but I've got... I gotta put some speed tape, aluminum tape over these holes to keep the butyl rubber from bleeding through, fix the holes where we've damaged it. Um, we had a cushion in here when he was doing the headliner, but you still get marks and stuff and you tear the foil. So I just need to cover all this up so it doesn't bleed through to the carpet and stick. The worst part about this is just getting the backing off the tape when you've got extra large sausage fingers. So I just take it and put it over the hole and then take the scissors and poke twice in there, push it down in so that it goes around the inside and keeps that from bleeding. Last thing you want is beetle rubber all stuck to your carpet and just make a mess. <laughs>
Okay, I have been painting my trim today and I've got the back window one in. Boy, that was a bear to get in. Um, I've got some clips that I ordered uh, that go up here. They go inside these pieces of trim that go over here. There's a guy on eBay, uh, he's just out of Idaho Falls, um, 25 miles away. I don't know when those are going to be here. I hope this week. And I can get the rest of this trim in and then I can start putting that dash in. So these are my, what would you call them, A pillars, the front ones up by the windshield. So one of these is in pretty good shape. The other one really should have been replaced. It's not in real good condition. It was the original one. Yeah, it's this one. It's got some flaking going on here. I may have to get another one and replace that later, but that is called antique white. So these are the door panels and Chrysler just calls them a white. And in the camera that shows up as white, but that's not white. It's an, kind of an almond color. It's the same color as these. So I had to find a color somewhat to match those door panels. Anyway, this is such tedious work to do all this. It just seems like I don't get anything done. That's why I want this interior done so bad is because once this tedious works out of the way, I can get to some meaty work and get it done. I was going to change this over to an orifice tube and crimp the line here but I can't do that because it's too loose in here it fits really tight right here but it won't fit in there so they make a orifice tube adapter for your liquid line so I'll have to come off of this and down somewhere and then put the deal in that'll hold the orifice tube and it's just a fitting that goes between your lines um, I've seen some cars where they put the orifice tube in the liquid line where it comes out of the condenser I don't want to go that far but I need to talk to somebody apparently you can do that because they make cars like that um, seems counterintuitive because you're boiling Freon in that line and picking up heat. doesn't make any sense. I'd like it as close as I could get it. So somebody knows the ins and outs of that. Um, I'd like to install it as close as I can. And that adapter, or basically it's like a repair deal, looks like the best way to go. But the one I like the most basically is a straight fitting with half inch male lines o-ring set up so that you could just you'd have to make a line with another fitting put your adapter in and then connect off that and go uh heater ac unit is in uh got the defroster vents mounted in there uh I got to wash the crossover tube that goes over there to that side of the AC vent. Uh, I actually think I can put that on after the dash is in. So I think it's time to start putting the dash in at this point. Got the rear seats in. Check the fit. Got the uh, package tray in. Got the rear window trim in. I probably already told you that. So anyway, we're moving. This is my dash pad, and it's all cracked crap. And uh, it was sticking up really bad around here, so I put some 3M adhesive under there, cleaned it out, and I've got it clamped down. I'm probably gonna leave it here all night long, make sure that glues it down good, because I've got this dash top, dash cover, and this will go over top of it, and you, they give you a tube of some kind of silicone and you just go around the outer edges and put a bead of that on and then you slip it on 
and uh, put some heavy stuff or whatever to get it to hold and then let that dry and then I can go ahead and put it on but I don't remember <laughs> how I did this so you've got 11 speed nuts that attach it there's uh, studs sticking out of the metal backing of the dash pad and like that's one and there's one there and one right in the middle anyway the ones up along the top of the dash are going to be the worst um, but I can't remember how you do this because I can undo the bolts that hold this and tip it down and then get the dash pad on and bolt those down but then getting these bolts back in I don't I don't know how you do that um, Boy, it's, it's been too long. I know I'm going to use a lot of, a lot of spe my special words when I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm sure of it. But I've got, I got this in and my vacuum hoses. Well, this is speaker wire and this will get cut and then I'll build a connector. This is the ones that go to the package tray in the rear window. I've got my bulkhead screwed on, my wiring deal. So if i got to tip, tip the dash back, I'm going to have to take that back out. I hope I don't. You notice the seat I got in here. This is the old original seat. It's not in real good shape. I'd like to get the seats reupholstered. I don't know if I... Now I'm looking at this and I'm just going, man, this is time consuming. I, I hope like hell I get this done. I gotta beat Frank, but I see Frank's got his bearings for his transmission, so, and he's got his motor together, so I think Frank will get his TD8 going before Jeff gets his Challenger going. Okay, the end of another hard day at the shop. Look at all this cold, lonely iron sitting out here. Sure wish that car was done so I could give some TLC to that lonely, cold iron. <laughs> but it's supposed to get up to I think 50 by Saturday so this will all be gone woohoo but it's going to get down to zero tonight it's going to be chilly so I'm in the car again <laughs> so I wanted to let you know why it's been so long since I've put up a video so I got a new computer and uh, Microsoft installs what you, they call uh, the HVEC software. HVEC is uh, high, it's just a high quality video that a GoPro puts out if you raise the frame rate up. Anyway, but they don't install the codex to run it. And so they make you go buy the codex for 99 cents, but you got to sign in to Microsoft. Long story short, uh, I had to change some information, so they locked me out for 30 days of my Microsoft account. So I just backdoored them and created another account through my other email address and got the codex, installed them. My video player on the computer would work, but my Adobe Premiere Elements would not play HVEC. So I got a hold of Adobe and they said, yeah, we don't, Elements doesn't support HVEC video yet, if ever. So he said, why don't you try Adobe Premiere Pro for seven days for free. Uh, I tried it. I tried editing this video three times on it and destroyed it. So I got some a learning curve to do there if I keep it. But I would really like to upload videos in the HVEC format. But I just noticed people who use uh, GoPro 9s and 10s that the video is, video is just so crisp and clear. So I'd like to be able to do that. So I'm going to have to learn Adobe Premiere Pro. So then I had some problems with my computer. And I had to get with Dell. And then they transferred me to a lady back east. And she was messing with my computer. And it's still somewhat messed up. So anyway, I got the video done, long story, but it's just been one pain after the other, and it's like, man, I don't have time for this, so 
just kind of had to walk away. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm um, getting closer every day, getting this interior stuff done, uh, and uh, trying to finish that up. So, wish me luck. Yeah.